ธรรมชาติเดียวโอ้ชายเชนยอง Please next time put me on the middle and say man. I've come this morning and before I go, I want to hold it long. I want to hold it long. But I have two special guests. I'm looking around. I saw them, and I, I just want to give you know a little thing. You know, one of them I have my my inspiration. Uh, my uh, my my my. Uh, I should put this my view. I know that one who inspires me. Amen. Uh, We've been married about. Mm, I better get it right here, man. <laughs> Thirty-seven years, ain't that? My wife. Now, a request before I speak it. I didn't get this request. Some people called. She gonna be there? Okay. She says, "Oh, she's gonna have a." I'm asking for a song before I come with the word, amen. But I'm going. I, you know, I, I love my wife, and she is to. She is who, who I brought me to the Lord. I mean, not brought me, but helped me grow in the Lord. Amen. All right. But I have somebody else that I, 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 I'm not going to put more glass and barrels and everything. But my son, my, my firstborn, is here this morning. I'm surprised. Come on, please stand up. I want you to know who you are. Sometimes we need my kids before we know what they're gonna be like. Amen. But, amen. But he's he's grown into a nice young man. I was worried there for a little bit. I was worried. Amen. I thought to take the name back. Amen. But you know, God is still good. Amen. So at this time, who you want to know? I ask my wife, please, baby. They ask, I didn't do this. Please give us a little song this morning. <laughs> I just, I just want to do a little piece of a hymn. Uh, I love that, the, that we, we bless the baby, we lifted up the name of Jesus. The choir is already rendered, but. Mm. I should be so sad. Why does my heart feel so glad? Why is my soul so happy and gay when all around me burn? They seem to fall. Yes, I'm not worried. No, not at all. For if I pray, Jesus, He will roll.
Now my child, speak of the leaves in your name. Amen. All right. We're coming this morning from a text. We're coming from a scripture that was picked by the committee. And it's kind of unusual when we talk about anniversaries. We usually go back about what the church is doing and, and, and what accolation, who's the oldest in the church, the youngest in it. And we go through all that, but this is kind of how you see this. It was, seemed to be an unusual uh, theme, but it seems to be one that fits the church for this time. Amen. Amen. I'm just sitting down there. Get some notes and then, and then Brother Fred said, Man, time to finish all those notes, you're gonna have a new sermon, amen. But we, we, we know that God is still good, amen. So, 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 so let us turn to the book of Judges, the book of Judges, Old Testament. But let us stand in the book of Judges, chapter 7. This is where our theme is coming from. And the pastor spoke on this earlier this morning, but the book of Judges, amen, chapter 7. Start at verse number four. Chapter seven, start at verse number four. And then when you have that, please say amen. amen. All right. And it reads thus. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you. The same shall go with you. And whoever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue as a dog laps, you shall sit apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lap putting their hand to their mouth was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the three hundred who left, I will save you and deliver you from the Mennonites in your land. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. You may be seated. In the thing in the that the committee decided what they gave this morning, who will be left to fight? Who will be left to fight. And, and, and as I said earlier, this is kind of an unusual thing for the church to be involved in. But yet as I study, it really is a question that the church needs to answer. Amen. Who will be left to fight? you got to understand that we do not just come to serve. Say amen. We come to be equipped. Can I talk to you this morning? Just as an army prepares to go to battle, it is just fall out the barracks and run to the battlefield. They have to be equipped. They have to get their equipment together. They have to get their armor on. They have to get their guns and go make sure they load it up. Then they march okay. off to battle. Come on, somebody. We, we just don't come here sometimes just to assemble ourselves. I know we're supposed to come together, but we should come together for a purpose. Amen. When we talk about who will be left to fight, in, in our text, in the book of Judges, uh, it covers the history of God's people from the time when they were selling the promise and when it was led by Joshua, Joshua dies off and, and God is, is, is really need his people from heaven. But as we know, sometimes when the leader is not always physically present, we seem to slack up. Come on, somebody. You know what they say, when the cat's away, the mice will play. Come on, somebody. And since we don't see somebody watching over us a lot of time, we'll start wandering off and doing things that we shouldn't be doing. And so uh, every time that the people turned away from God, they begin to sin and they would get themselves in trouble. See, you got to understand this. God said, I am your king. You don't need nobody else. You got to understand, we had the great, they had the greatest king of all kings. Amen. He was a king maker himself. Amen. Nobody was on top of the government. As God said, it would happen. Amen. Don't you know the government is on his shoulder? He controls everything. Yes, we have a president in office now, but God had him put there. Amen. Yeah, we all voted somebody and some voted nay. But let me tell you, God had a place in time for this to happen. If it's a God's will, it's going to happen. Yeah. And so, they, so every time they got in trouble, they would cry out to God and God would raise somebody up. Let me tell you, folks, when you get into trouble, don't cry out to those people who you've never heard of before. But you need to be crying out to the Lord that you know about. I, 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 I I just don't need to just call on Sylvia to help out. Help. Oh, she's my helper and I love her dearly and she's there to give me some help. But sometimes I can't reach. I need to know somebody else I can call on. And many times I get up now, I don't even know why I used to wait for the big 
truck would have come. I used to call when I, I, I think it's something I can't handle. But I learned in my spiritual life when the small stuff starts, I'm calling on the man of the Lord. Because we got all these things that God is in love. And so every time the people get in trouble, God will raise up a judge. He said, I, 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 I'm going to send you somebody to deliver you. Can I talk to you this morning? Uh, you, you turn away from me, but you call on my name. See, even when you turn away from me, when you don't have nothing to do with it, when you leave him, he still will hear your cry. Come on, somebody. He'll hear your cry because he said, I do who you were. Uh, before you left me, just because you left me don't mean I don't love you anymore. I'll tell you this morning, even when you're out there, you think he's forgotten all about you. Don't you know he's keeping an eye on you still? He's still looking for you to come back. Uh, so he raised up a judge and, and, and attacked God had sinned and, and, and the people had sinned. The guy that the God had gave them, you know, the Mennonites had come in and taken over the land. They were like locusts. They came in. They were the People, they, they had all the camels, all the donkeys. They would just walk from place to place. Whenever they went, they took over everything. They couldn't grow wheat. They couldn't uh, harvest grapes. Because if they did that, the midnight would just move in. So as locusts came over the field, so did the midnights come over the, the land of Israel. And every time they did something, every time somebody rolls a piece of food, every time I say something, the midnight would come in and take it. In fact, this man giving was hiding away from the midnight. He he was fresh and rain. He had to hide behind the wine press because he said, if I do it, I'm going to open. All they're going to do is take all my hard, hard labor and I have nothing left. But you know, the people cried out. Gideon didn't know it, but he was God's chosen vessel. Amen. Some of you don't know it yet, but you're God's chosen vessel. You may not have all that you think you should have, but it don't take much. You're still God's chosen vessel. Can I talk to you this morning? Some of you are reluctant vessel, but I'm telling you, God has a, a plan for you. He's still going to use you. Just because you say no don't mean you're not going to be used. Can I talk to you? Jonah said no and he ran away, but God said you're still mine. I'm still going to use you. You just might as well turn all back around and do what I tell you to do. And so Gideon was hiding there, and God says, Gideon, I need you to lead my people. And I don't know if I was bold as Gideon, but Gideon said, Lord, is that really you talking to me? Can I talk to you this morning? A lot of times the Lord speaks to us and we don't realize and don't know His voice. And Gideon said, Lord, I want to make sure. I know we need to make sure, but these days and times we have the Holy Spirit. And if you're in tune with God, the Holy Spirit will direct and guide you. You don't need to ask where the Lord is. Is it the Holy Spirit talking to me? If you know Jesus for yourself and you know His Spirit, His Spirit will tell you that's me talking to you. He says, Time is by the Spirit. Now, that is no right now, but Gideon said, I need to know her. You ask me to do something I ain't never did before. Let me give you a test. Be careful when you test God, because I know one day God has never failed a test. He said, I will put this fleece out there, and I'll tell you, Lord, I want the fleece to be dripping wet, but I want everything around to be dry as a ball. And he put the fleece out, and the next day, he took the fleece up, wrung it out, and water dripped everywhere, but the ground was all dry. I'm around him. And Lord said, hey, Gideon, it's me. But Gideon still wanted another test. I told you, be careful how many times you test the Lord. Because God has never failed a test. And then he said, the next day, yeah, let the ground be wet and let the fleece be dry. And finally, God said, here you go again, Gideon. You're still trying to get out of this. But let me tell you, I'm going to perform another miracle. And here it is. And finally, he said, Lord, I guess it's you talking to me. What do you want me to do? He says, I want you to be the leader of my people right now. And they cried out to me. And I want them to know that because they cried out to me, I will deliver them. Don't you know when deliverance comes, you got, you know what the first step of deliverance is calling out to the Lord. Father said, I, I ain't been delivered yet. That's called they cried out to the Lord. I think he knows more. If you want to be delivered, the first step is to cry out say, I need to be delivered. You need to cry out to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm in this situation, but I don't want to give up. I'm crying out to you. And he said, get in, my folks have cried out. 
I know that this oppressed by the Mennonites, but I'm telling you right now, I can help them out. They finally got their understanding that the only one that can help me and them is me. And I'm glad they cried out. See, that's what the Lord is waiting on. You can sometimes he puts you in situations so you know that's only the Lord that can help you out of this. I want to talk to you today. He said, I want you to turn to me. And so then he starts as Lord, I'll be your leader. And so he starts gathering up an army. He says, you know what? Some people say, well, how come God would just smite the foe? Let me tell you, God has a great and a power, a great and powerful God. But sometimes, you know what? I'll put you here. I, you know what? I'm going to use you. I don't need to do everything. You got some faith. That's why you do everything. I don't need to talk to have angels come down from heaven. You got two legs. You got two hands. You can make a ball. You can do anything. Why do I need to do everything? That's why I have you. And so he started gathering up all. And Gideon looked around and said, look what I got going on here. I got 32,000 people. This begins to feel good because you know that he manifests their strength in numbers. But you got to understand, the Lord's math is different than our math. Amen. Yeah, we think it's a great number. Sometimes the Lord said, that's just too many. But Gideon said, you know, the more I have, the better off I am. But the Lord said, let me tell you this, Gideon. Uh, two and two is four to you. But let me tell you, four is too many for me. Uh, and all these people that you have, I've got to let you know, you have too many. The reason you have too many is not because of the number, but because of the attitude. So if you go up there with all these men, win the battle, y'all will forget to give me the credit. You say we did this all by ourselves. We 32,000 of us, we will claim the victory, and you will get all about the Lord. See, sometimes the Lord says, I can't do it this way, because I do it this way. Y'all will understand that it's me, so I'm going to do it the crazy, stupid way. And then you know what you believe? Say, it only can be God, because nobody else can do this. Can I talk to you this Lord? See, some of you don't understand it. You say, I don't know this is happening this way because the Lord is trying to make a point with you. I'm doing it this way because this is the only way you understand that it's me. Can I talk to you this way? This is the only way that you understand that it's me. And so he said, well, Lord, what, 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 what I'm going to do with this? I have 32,000 men. I'm, I'm ready to go. And the Lord said, it's time to thin them out. Come on, somebody. Don't you know sometimes the Lord has to thin out this church before the church can be able to take a great break. And I this book. See, sometimes it's a thin and have to go on. The church can't move on because you got too much heavy dead weight. He said, sometimes you got to thin them out. See, sometimes you got to be lean and mean and ready to move when the Lord comes into your life. He said, I got to trim some of the fat off. He said, let me tell you this. I know how some of their attitudes is. I can read it in their heart. They think they're all that. They think they're ready. But I truly know what their heart is. He said, God, on this. All of you who are scared. Come on, somebody. All of you who don't really know what to go into the battle. All of you who have never used the sword before. All of you who be incompetent. All of you who just hold everybody else back. All of you who really want to be home with your wife. All of you who want to be home with your children. All of you who don't even know what the battle is about. All of you who have your sword sharp up. All of you who don't even know how to take orders on the bench. He said, you go home. We don't need you. You know, we just don't need to handle So he looked around at 22,000 four flats. He looked around at all I got was 10 left. Uh, he was never scared folks and went off and they went back home. Uh, I gotta let you know there's some scared folks in the church today. Uh, when it comes time for the church to get into the battle, there's some scared folks in the church. The church is about to bear down and go into battle. There's some folks that start to question uh, what, 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 what battle are we going to? How are we going to fight? What are we going to do? Who's going to help us out? Who's going to be our allies? So we worry about what you do. We worry about what everybody else is going to do. Oh, there's some scared folks in the church today. When the battle comes on, you don't see them much. Amen? Oh, they're starting to listen to all the so It's going to listen to the usher board me. The church is going into battle. Oh, that was just a deacon board me. Oh, I'm going to deal with that a little later on. But you've got to understand this. There's some scared folks in the church. The world is coming up against them. You know why they're scared? Because they haven't got to put on the whole armor of God. And that's a message out there. Oh, they're scared because they don't play they have the sword of the spirit. They don't have out there. They don't play they have the helmet of salvation. They come on. They don't play they have the shield of faith. So I'll talk to somebody. That's why they're scared. Because they don't know how to fight in the battle. But God says, send them home. I don't have time to train 
bedroom now. Because the water is hot. Send us Edwards home. I can't deal with it right now. 22,000 left. But get it around our 19 left. I think we will do some good things with 10. All of a sudden, so tell me something like 10,000 sounds like a good number to let them off at all. But God is still too many. Oh, come on, I can see Gideon you now. 10,000 is still too many. And I'm never with a whole nation of invaders. I have 10,000 is still too many. See, sometimes even the leaders in the church begin to wonder what God's going to do sometimes. Oh, you say, you give me this, and you tell me I'm supposed to battle with that. Come on, come on, man. Sometimes I'm going to give you four, and you come out and hold the battle with these. Come on, man. Give me Moses in the wilderness and said, Lord, why you give me these people? They ain't getting on my last nerve. Come on, somebody. But he said, 10,000 is too many. 10,000 is still too many. The Lord said, come on, I've got to give them another test. Oh, then our scripture said, Lord, said, take them to the water. Sometimes the Lord will take us to the water, and sometimes we will fly. When I talk to somebody, and help us to understand where we are, we got to go through some things. He told me to take them to the river to drink, and he gave them the test. Let me tell you, again, this is how you go choose them. Those who get down on their knees and back back the dog, put them in one section. But those who fly all the way down, uh, you put them in another section. What you trying to say, but what the Lord was telling them, give him those who laugh like a dog. In other words, those who get on their knees, bring the water up to their lips. I want you to put them aside. But for those who put their head all the way in the water, you put them somewhere else. The reason he said, I take those who put the water up, he said, I want those because those who laugh like a dog, they kept their eyes open.
Some of you have been here longer than me. You have seen miracles come and you've seen them go. Oh, can I talk to you this morning? Oh, some of them have been leaders. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of them in the choir. Oh, Sister Lorraine, I know sometimes you come to the choir person. You have a choir stand for them. And every time there's a quartet up there. Oh, but you got to keep on. You got to keep on side. Oh, they used to be hunches. You got to hunch your boy that's getting thin. Oh, deacons, oh, I leave you alone either. But sometimes even the deacons would leave. Sometimes the trustees would leave. But you said, who is left to find? Well, I got to let you know, the Lord is not concerned about church members. Can I tell you this morning, it's not about church members. He just don't want church members. He wants a fight. Can I tell you this morning? Now, everybody can be a church member. But it takes somebody to be a fire. Now, can I talk to you this morning? I'm coming to a close. But you got to remember this, my heart. That those who left, that's all the time. Because wherever you leave, somebody else will come in and stretch. And I'm not asking this morning. The Lord will take one away and then will add three. Can I talk to you this morning? Some of us think that because we leave, the church is just going to stop. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, where you go, the church will keep going on. I have that old hymn that used to say, uh, get my church and let's go on. And I'm talking to you. Some of you will be going in there, but the mind of the missionary back to church will still be celebrating on the right of the Lord. Oh, he needs fires. I'll tell you, he needs some serious fires because Satan is busy. And I'll let you know this. He don't need a whole lot of us. He just needs some of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't you know he can do much with us if we just be obedient to him? I'm not telling you. It didn't take thousands to rob the children of the He took those three hundred to leave read on in the script. I can't leave it like that unfinished. But you got to understand, the three hundred went out there with some trumpets and a pit. And they surround the thing. 100 on this side, 100 on that side, 100 on this side. And Gideon said, When I break my picture and blow my trumpet, you do the same. And then when Gideon sounded the trumpet, the other trumpet sounded, the lights lit up. And all the people looked around and said, Who are these people that's got us surrounded? And as they were doing I'm sure they saw a host of a no time bomb. Yeah, and we're going to do battle. And they begin, the enemy begin to scare. Can I talk to you this morning? Sometimes you don't need to have a whole lot of folk on your side. All you need is just the law on your side. Some of us can have a great crowd. You try to gather friends up. Stop gathering folk up. Fall on your knees and fall on the name of the law. And the Lord will bless you with the victory. And we got to understand this. We're not the only ones in the fight. Oh my God, we've been on the battlefield for 22 years. My other church is on the battlefield for 40 some years. I'm letting you know right now, you may think you are all alone, but let me tell you this, there's other battles going on. There's other battlefields. There's other fighters out there. It's not just limited to the Mahara of the Missionary Baptist Church. You got to understand when that prophet fell down and said, Lord, I'm the only one that you got left. He said, let me correct you right now. You may be my prophet. You've done all I said, but let me tell you, I have 7,000 who have got a battle down there. You might have just got a hole. There's other churches out there fighting on the overhead. But I, I got to let you know as I close that we are in a fight. Come on. You said, who will be left to fight? Well, the Lord is waiting on those. He will have some fighters left. Don't you know the Lord all always has a remnant left? Come on, talk to you this morning. There's always going to be a fight. Amen. He's not looking for a uh, Muhammad uh, Ali. He's a, a right taxi. He's just looking for some homo saints who put on a whole arm of God. Who are willing to go out on the battlefield. Who are able to say, I know the Lord is mine. I know victory is mine. Not because of my strength, but because of my faith. Because I believe in the Lord. Because I believe in Him. He's going to protect me. Oh, uh, and if God says, people say, who is left to fight? Well, the church is left in the fire. It may be five members, six members. But let me tell you, as long as there's some members and some fighters left, the church will still go on. Who's left to fight? All of us who pray and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're the ones who are left to fight. Can I talk to you this morning? Even our greatest 
crucified, even upon the love of the Lord, Jesus Christ himself, that when he hung on the cross, you got to understand that sometimes when you fight, and sometimes it seems like you're all alone. Those who are always around and they leave you. Even our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he was on the cross on the hill of Calvary. And he looked around all the people who said they would stay with him, be with him. No one was going to be seen. Can I talk to you this morning? But I'm telling you this, even though those others went around, he still was not by himself. Because he looked down at the foot of the cross. I'm telling you, it was three women still there. They were there from the beginning, and they're still there to the end. I'm telling you, those women were some great fathers. Amen. And they, they didn't forget the battle. They didn't forget who their Savior was. They weren't scared of anything. They said, He is mine. And he said, Look down. Nobody else was there. He was three women right there. You got to understand it. Who's left to fight? The saints are left to fight. Now, I'm talking about saints, and I'm not talking about church membership. I'm talking about those who believe in the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Those who hold in high esteem. Those who believe in who he is. I'm telling you, the battle is still gone. The church has been here for 22 years. But let me tell you this. It's not a time to look back on what you already done. 22 years, you need to look toward the next 22 years. That's what we saw to do. He said, I still got some fire. See, it's not always the big churches with the three or four services and large membership. He said, I need some fire to go out into the battlefield. I need people to go on mission trips. I need people to go into the jail. I I need people to go on the street. I, I, I remember one time when I first got to pass a gave me a sign and he couldn't go. He had me go down and, and preach and talk on the sidewalk in the pregnancy center. Reverend Barber never did anything like that before in my life. But I went down, I learned a valuable lesson. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're on the battlefield for the Lord, he might bless you. And I can't you this morning. I, I got to let you know, you want to know who's left to fight? I'm telling you, those who are Called by the name of Jesus Christ. Those who know how to call, those are the ones who left the fight. Don't you know God will always have somebody? Stop saying that nobody will do what you can do. Let me tell you, God has people everywhere. He's got Bibles everywhere. Not just at the Mahalo Baptist Church. Oh, 22 years is a good thing to celebrate. I'm not trying to humble yourself, but 22 years is all right. But has it been 22 years of doing what the Lord said do? Come on, somebody. Uh, it's not how long you're doing something, it's how well you've done it. Can I stop you? Yeah. It's not how long you've been in life, it's what you've done in your life. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm glad that God has put me here. In another month, I'll be 60 years old. But I'm trying to say, Lord, I got some time to make up. I haven't done all that I should do. But I want to fight for your name. I want to get back on the battlefield. I want to preach your word. I want to teach your word. I want to do all that you expect of me. Yet who is left to fight? I'm telling you, those who are called by the name of Jesus Christ. You are the one who gets me to fight. You're not just here to come sit in the church building. You come here to get equipped. I told you earlier, you come and get a Put your arm on. You come in here to learn how to use your sword. And once you get that all taken care of, you should sound a trumpet as giving you something. You should sound a great shout and get into the battle. Say, Lord, I know you're going to give me the victory. I'm going into the battle because I'm under your fire. And I don't know who left, but I'm still with you. Come on, somebody. Who's still with the Lord this morning?